Okay, in this video I'd like to discuss the quantum states of the hydrogen atom. So basically what we're going to do is look at the different shells and energy levels of those shells. So the first thing we need to do is a quick reminder of the quantum numbers and all that sort of thing. So the first thing I'm going to show you is we're going to define n as the principal quantum number. Uh, quantum number. Alright, now this comes from, it, well, the principal quantum number n allows you to get the energy levels, the actual energy in the energy levels, generally in terms of electron volts. And just to show you where that came from, if you were to look at the solutions to the Schrodinger equation, you get your wave equation, but you also, you, you also get your energy levels, e sub, z, e, sub, e sub n's. So, for example, look at my video where I solved the uh, infinite potential well, and you'll see that I get an energy, something that usually looks like n squared, pi squared, h bar squared over, I don't know, 72 or something like that. And the point here is that n, uh, by changing the n values, uh, uh, integer values of n, you're able to get higher and higher energy levels. Next, let's look at the orbital angular momentum quantum number. Now this is, it's only a quantum number, it does not give you your orbital angle quantum, or orbital, ang orbital angular momentum. So this is just a quantum number. So it's the orbital angular momentum quantum number. And we call this L. And L can go from uh, 0, 1, 2, the whole way up to n minus 1. It is a quantum number. It does not give you your actual orbital angular momentum. So why, why, do, we, why do we talk about orbital angular momentum? Well, we considered the electrons to be orbiting around a nucleus. So for that reason, uh, because they're going in, in obviously, uh, an angular, there's, there's, there's angular momentum because they're basically moving in the motion of a circle. The next thing we're going to look at is the total orbital angular momentum. All right? Now for this, we give L, and this is the actual orbital angular momentum. And we define L, that's the total orbital angular momentum. And we define the total orbital angular momentum and we get it by the square root of L times L plus 1. And we give this in units of Planck's or um, h-bar which is Planck's constant over 2 pi. The next one we're going to look at is m sub L. This is another quantum number. This is the orbital angular momentum quantum number in the z direction or the arbitrary z direction so it's similar to L okay so this is the orbital angular momentum quantum number in the z direction in the arbitrary z direction alright and m sub L can go up to plus or minus L very nearly there the z component of the total orbital angular momentum, this is the actual angular momentum in the z direction, is given by m sub l times h bar. So it's given, you're, you're given it in units of h bar. Now the next thing we need to do is discuss the spectroscopic notation. So the chemists, I think it was chemists that came up with this. So we'll say if we define l, l goes from 0, 1, 2, 3 and it goes up to n minus 1. And we define anything with uh, an orbital angular momentum quantum number L of 0 as saying it is an S shell. If it's got 1 it's a P shell, if it's got 2 it's a D shell, if it's got 3 it's an F shell and then it goes G, H, I, J, K and so on. Alright, so the last thing I'd like to discuss is, before I actually show you the energy levels is the spin orbit coupling. So J is equal to spin orbit coupling quantum number and the spin orbit coupling is thought of it's thought of as follows we can say that the electron is orbiting around the nucleus so the nucleus in the frame of reference of the nucleus it sees it is stationary and it sees an electron orbiting around it whereas in the frame of reference of in the electron the electron is stationary and the nucleus is orbiting around that so for that reason there is an interaction between both of those angular momenta and you need to take into account of that by using J. And we define J is equal to 
S plus L, where S is the spin quantum number or M, uh, the, the spin quantum number. Okay? Now, what is the spin quantum number? It was found when people were analyzing uh, quantum mechanics that an electron moving around a nucleus is analogous to uh, it, it is an, it, there will say the mathematics of it were anal analogous to something spinning and that's not to say that the electron is actually spinning it is just saying that it's it's the mathematics is very similar to to, to, to understand it a bit better look at my video on um, on scientific models I've called it scientific models and that might help you to explain or help you to understand that a bit better but the spin quantum number came from the mathematics and uh, that's that's all I've got to say about that. So now let's go and calculate the different energy sh or the different shells in the hydrogen atom. Okay, and this is actually very straightforward. All right. So what we'll do is we'll define our quantum numbers. So I'm going to start with n. We're going to have our angular momentum quantum number l. We're going to have our angular momentum quantum number in the z direction m sub l. I'm going to have a shell, in actual fact, I put them closer, m sub l, we have our shell, and I'm going to give a, actually I won't talk about degeneracy, that's something I won't talk about. So, let's look at when n is equal to 1. When n is equal to 1, we said that l can go up to, l goes to n minus 1. So n minus 1 in this case is 0. Okay? Then we have the angular momentum quantum number in the z direction, uh, m sub l goes to plus or minus l. So it's that's zero as well. And I've said before that a, where l is equal to zero, you're in the s shell. So how we write this is n is equal to one, s is uh, l is equal to zero, so we have the one s shell. Next, if we look at n is equal to two, we have the total, we'll say the, the maximum um, value of L is going to be 2 minus 1 which is 1 so as a result we can get a value of 1 or a value for z uh, of 0 for the uh, angular momentum quantum number alright so when L is equal to 1 M sub L can be equal to plus or minus 1 okay so we get 0 or plus or minus 1 and when it's 0 it just gets 0 by the way it goes up to plus or minus 1 uh, times L. So this goes up to zero. You'll see this happening in a mo uh, more clearly in a moment. So the L equals to one corresponds to a P shell. So we have a P and then the quantum number is equal to two. So this is the two P shell. Here we have zero, okay, and corresponding to an angular momentum of zero. As a result we're talking about an S shell, the same as this one up here. However, the quantum number is 2. So this is the 2s shell. If we go to quantum number equal to 3, we can get 3 minus, uh, 3 minus 1. So L goes up to L goes up to 2, a maximum of 2. So we can get, it can either be 2, it can be 1, or it can be 0. Whereas the quantum number, of course, stays the same. So M sub L goes up to plus or minus L. So it can be 0, plus or minus 1, or plus or minus 2. This one can be 0 or plus or minus 1 and this one can be 0. Uh, we know where L is equal to 0 we have, we're talking about an S shell. Where L is equal to 1 we're talking about a P shell and where L is equal to 2 we're talking about a D shell. And next we just put in our values for our angular momentum so this is 2D, 1P and uh, oh take that back that's incorrect excuse me we put in our quantum numbers so this becomes 3d, 3p, and 3s. And I'll do one final one. Oh, you couldn't see that. Excuse me. Take that back now. A final one final one. I'll do n is equal to 4. So when n is equal to 4, we get l is equal to n minus 1. The maximum is l uh, uh, n minus 1. So that's 3. So we need, it's going to be either 3, it's going to be either 2, 1, or 0. Alright, so our quantum number doesn't change. We know that m sub l, which is in this corridor, m, m sub l goes up to plus or minus l. Alright, so m sub l is going to be equal to the following. It's going to be equal to 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3. 
0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 0 plus or minus 1 and 0 we know that n is, when L is equal to 0 we're talking about an S shell when L is equal to 1 we're talking about a P shell when L is equal to 2 we're talking about a D shell and when L is equal to 4 we're talking about an F shell so we then plug in our values for our quantum numbers so it's 4 4 4 and 4 so let's just look over that again so we have our we have three quantum numbers and we talk about our shells and we can see going from n is equal to 1 to n is equal to 4 we get all of these different energy levels and all these all of these different shells so that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it down to your friends and subscribe to my channel.